Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and this is AI in Games, a series on research and applications of artificial intelligence in video games. In this video, we return to the world of Far Cry to look at one of the core mechanics of 2016's Far Cry Primal, animal taming. In Primal, players can lure and tame a variety of predators to later use as weapons in combat. It's a fun new system to add to the Far Cry formula, but its introduction was far from straightforward. So let's take a look at how the companion AI works in Primal and the steps taken to ensure it operates in and around the systemic AI Far Cry is known for. As detailed in an earlier video in the series, Far Cry is built atop a systemic gameplay framework, where numerous systems and mechanics interact with one another and enables all sorts of emergent gameplay to arise. What that means for you as a player is that you can get a tiger to attack an outpost while you're throwing C4 at them from a helicopter, and the C4 blows up a jeep that then flies through the air and takes out that one guy who was going to call for reinforcements. Boom, there's your $60 investment right there. There are numerous AI systems involved in making this happen. The friendly NPCs, the enemy soldiers, cars, honey badgers, the little shits, and yeah, all the other wildlife too. So speaking of the wildlife, where do the companions come into play? So, while Far Cry is built primarily at Ubisoft Montreal, the companion AI in Primal was developed by a small team at Ubisoft Toronto. It wasn't their first foray into Far Cry, having been brought in to assist development on Far Cry 4 after the launch of their inaugural title, Splinter Cell Blacklist, in 2013. Toronto were responsible for building the Shangri-La sequence in Far Cry 4, a series of five linear missions within the game in which the player trips out on some weird drug cocktail and finds themselves on the path of Kalinag the Seeker, fighting demon dogs and a giant bird. In these levels, the player befriends a tiger that they can use as a weapon and clear out enemies. That's right, kids, you get a tiger gun. As Far Cry 4 wrapped development in 2014 and Primal moved into pre-production, Toronto pitched to Montreal that they would expand this one-off feature and turn it into one of the core mechanics of the new game. However, this brought with it a stack of new problems that were never encountered during the development of the Shangri-La sequence. As already described, Far Cry carries numerous systems, several of which in the AI itself, as part of the systemic gameplay experience. However, Shangri-La is a series of linear missions with very specific, hand-built crafted sequences. As a result, almost all of the systemic AI is disabled in these levels and the behaviours of the tiger were heavily customised to allow it to fit within the narrative playing out. However, the companions in Primal are expected to operate throughout a game where all the systemic shenanigans are in full force. As such, many of the existing systems that they built for the tiger didn't transpose directly across to Primal and in fact an entirely new system was put into place. To build the companion system, the team took a step back to consider two key aspects. First up, what is the fantasy they're trying to sell? In this case, the idea of the player being the beastmaster that can literally throw bears at their problems. Secondly, what is the role of the companion? To do this, they considered that the animals would support the player and took inspiration from the likes of Dog Meat from Fallout 4 and Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite, a topic I've already covered on AI in games. Animals act as both companions on the hunt across the plains of Oros Valley, but also as a collection of diverse weapons players can throw into combat scenarios and turn the tide of battle. Far Cry Primal is essentially a Mesolithic period reboot of Pokemon, only with more teeth and a lot more collectibles on the minimap. During initial development, there were over 50 animals prototyped as companions. Pretty much any animal from previous Far Cry games was toyed with as a potential weapon. However, given the production schedule implied Ubisoft wanted to launch the game in two years, they scaled it down from 50 to 17. This sadly meant cutting out what sounded like impractical but f***ing awesome companions that reached prototype, including a chicken and a freaking turtle. Sure, they might be useless in combat, but they would have been my blood brothers in the war on terror. So how does the companion AI work? Well, all of the AI in Far Cry is built using behaviour trees, a technique that's cropped up in my videos on Halo 2, Alien Isolation, and most recently Spec Ops The Line. In Far Cry, all the behaviour trees are built using design tools that encode them entirely in XML. The team in Toronto were wary of coming on board to start messing around with the existing code base, as well as the existing behaviour trees. Not just because it could cause conflicts for the team in Montreal, Shanghai and Kiev who also worked on the game, but also because of the sheer number and scale of these systems. 
This would require them to edit dozens of existing behaviour trees already established in the Far Cry codebase. But then that presents a new problem. The new companion behaviours would often contradict the systemic AI behaviour that already exists. So how did they address this? The solution is a system referred to as Dynamic Behaviour Tree Injection. The game at runtime injects a new microbehaviour into the system based on the command the player has given to the companion. This solution required little effort to introduce into the existing Far Cry AI architecture, plus new companions could be prototyped in a couple of days, given any animal could be extended to support the injection system. Perhaps most critically, it meant that the Toronto team could focus on refining the behaviours without worrying whether the Shanghai office would wake up the following morning, only to discover the entire behaviour tree system was broken. So how does this balance out with the existing system? After all, the companion behaviour is directive from the player, while the AI already operating in each animal is an emergent and responsive system based on the world around it. It needs to do what you tell it to do so as not to annoy you, but also not do stupid things so as not to annoy you. First of all, each injected behaviour tree dictates what priority it has over existing ones. Hence, animals could ignore things that they may typically react to. But conversely, it also permitted for certain instinctual responses, such as the fear of death, to interrupt or overrule the injected behaviour. Hence, while you might tell your tiger to run towards a chosen location, it won't run through fire and burn itself alive to satisfy your request, but it will return to operating in systemic AI mode once it reached the destination. Secondly, systemic behaviours can be disabled entirely if it doesn't suit what the companion behaviour requires. This is useful in some instances, given that your Beastmaster actions aren't really in the best interest of the animal, such as sending smaller animals to fight larger ones in combat. This retains a sense of empowerment in the mechanics and the fantasy the game tries to sell, by smartly and cleanly overriding all of the existing AI systems. Interestingly, maintaining the fantasy is the reason one of the most notable mechanics with the companions, the ability to pet them, is kept in the game. Petting a tamed animal has absolutely zero impact on the AI behaviour or its relationship with the player. Ubisoft just knew people would get a kick out of it, so they kept it in the build. But despite all this care and tension, there were still some very real problems to solve in the game. So let's look at the tricks used to keep the power fantasy on track. There were two specific issues that the companion AI team had to contend with in Primal. How companions stay within proximity of the player, and how do they follow you when you're on the move? This actually caused a number of problems given the team wanted to ensure that your companion should always be with you at any point in time, but sometimes the navigation meshes in the game world don't provide a valid path, or you've done something ridiculous like jumped off a high cliff that your tiger is not going to do as well. So how do they compensate for that? So keeping the companion in proximity is sometimes done in the easiest way possible. It teleports, but only if it's not within the player's field of view for more than a couple of frames and it's too far away to reach you within a couple of seconds. Should the animal be too far away, the game begins to sample locations behind the player that are valid for the companion to spawn onto. That way you don't have a bear spawn in a tiny rock or a saber-toothed tiger spawn in a river, given they can't swim. While in the retail build this happens very infrequently, you can catch it sometimes in the minimap in the bottom corner of the screen in very specific circumstances. Secondly, when companions are following you they try to stay in your field of view, but not directly in front of you. This is to ensure that they're not blocking your view of the path ahead, but also so you don't have to worry about staring at a bear's for 10 hours of gameplay, given each animal has its own custom animation set. Each has to handle how they move on each frame and adapt the animations to suit based on whether you're idle, walking, running, or even in stealth mode. All animals have a top speed of approximately 130% of the player's running speed when in field of view, but they have a top speed of 250% of your speed when you can't see them. This is to ensure they're never too far behind you if you try and run off without them. However, this creates a very specific problem that the Toronto team nicknamed slingshotting where if you get far enough away from your companion, it will come screaming up behind you and if you stop, the animal will keep moving for a time until it slows down. This created a very real problem during testing where if the player stopped suddenly near a cliff edge, the animal couldn't slow down in time and would throw themselves to their doom. The first solution to this was to make them respawn and teleport in after they fell from view, effectively resurrecting a dead companion so as not to punish the player for the animal's mistake. But tiger base jumping broke the immersion. 
To address this, animals frequently conduct raycast checks around them to calculate distances to nearby edges and can apply speed reduction multipliers, or as we call them, brakes, to the movement code, which solves around 90% of these instances in the final game. While it proved a minor detour from the traditional Far Cry formula, Primal and indeed its companion AI was a fun experience that provides some cool and engaging gameplay. The companion system subsequently returned in a much reduced capacity in Far Cry 5, with a handful of animals available as companions. Perhaps we'll see more of these systems and Far Cry itself on AI and games in the future. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video on Far Cry Primal. I threatened I was going to talk about this stuff way back when I launched the Far Cry 4 video, I think about two years ago. And now, thanks to these lovely patrons who are on screen right now, I've finally made good on my promise. Special thanks actually to Chris Seddon from Ubisoft Toronto, who I had the pleasure of chatting to at Nuclei back in, I think it was 2016. He actually gave a talk, uh, which this video is largely inspired by, and we had some fun chat talking about the game at the time. In the next patron voted topic, we're stepping back into the boots of Master Chief Petty Officer John117 as we return to the Halo franchise. And I'm going to be looking specifically at Halo 3 and how that game handles its large scale combat. All the gubbins that AI has to contend with along the way. In the meantime, please don't forget to like, subscribe to AI and Games, join the Patreon if you're jazzy about it, bang the drum, spread the word about AI and Games, and I'll see you all next month.